and I know, I know, Americans cannot stand hot stuff. I shouldn't. I, I know I'm generalizing, but that's just um, what my experience. Okay, I've decided to whip up something um, that any typical South African family will cook. So I've decided to make something for dinner and I am making a ground beef or what we call back home minced meat um, and I'm making, uh, I'm going to have some peppers, onion, mushrooms bunch of spices, uh, ground beef, and then we're going to wrap those with uh, romaine hearts. While we are in the subject of food, I just remembered uh, when I first moved to the United States, one of the most difficult things uh, that we had was adjusting to the food here in the United States. The food tasted totally different, even in simple things or basic things like eggs, uh, bread probably about the same but we were shocked at the amount of preservatives that the uh, the bread had because your bread could sit there for you know uh, a week or more without swelling whereas in South Africa you don't eat that bread in one or two days it goes bad because there are no preservatives and it's also very uh, warm um, so that was one of the things I mean it was a mission to adjust to the food here um, and we ate the food because really we had no choice we didn't even know how to make groceries because all the brands were totally different and uh, just the, the, the taste palette was different there was a lot of varieties in, in um, in, in the store like I remember one of the things that we did when we first uh, came here we went to a grocery store with one of the ladies that was uh, what that was basically helping us uh, with the move and um, and I remember just standing there like for, for what seemed forever trying to decide what what uh, brand of baked beans I should buy so I bought the baked beans finally that looked like something that I grew up with uh, with in South Africa and so I went back to the ho to the hotel trying to cook make something right and um, so I opened the can of beans and out came bacon I mean a big chunk of bacon <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself oh my gosh what is this so I was like so shocked but then I read the um, the can it said uh, baked beans with bacon so I thought maybe they were bacon flavor, but I didn't know. So I was kind of shocked. There was uh, like a big chunk of fat came out. And that was really the beginning of the end. In the next three years, all I was doing was gaining weight. I couldn't, I didn't even know what to eat. And in South Africa, I never, I ate in South Africa. I pretty much ate everything. And I never really, I mean, I was a little chubby, but I wasn't, you know, like, um, like, the way I am today and um, and I mean I never was able to lose the weight but I am trying you know uh, I'm always trying <laughs> like everybody else but I mean it was amazing like the food tasted totally different we've adjusted to the taste and we're used to the taste we enjoy the food but we have become better in how we shop for our food I always try and go for uh, after things that are organic uh, and uh, and that's really like a recent thing. Before I was just eating whole foods uh, more, more than anything, but I didn't care if they were organic or not. But I kind of care now as I'm trying to regain my health basically and make sure that, you know, like I'm not where I am. In fact, in South Africa, believe it or not, when I go there to the stores, like to the grocery stores, I'm always shocked because all the brands that are here now are over there. And here we are, when someone goes to South Africa, like, can you please bring us spices? Can you please bring us, you know, like tea and all these things that we grew up with. 
Whereas people over there, they buy the products that, you know, are imported, but really, South African products are very authentic. They still made the old-fashioned way. And I think it'd be wise for South Africans really to eat local brands that they know because then you can you, you won't be killing them. But right now, like uh, you f see imports in South African stores, grocery stores, cheaper than our local produced foods. And so that's really like a challenge. And I mean, I'm not impressed to be honest with you because when I go home, I want to eat the food that I grew up with. And it's become, and it's not that it's harder to find, but you can see that in a few years, those brands and those products will be gone because uh, of the competition that's imported and yet cheaper. Ask yourself that. So, uh, so that's really like uh, my concern. I hope that South Africans hold on to all the foods that we grew up with uh, because they were so like good and they tasted real more than anything. Um, there's not a lot of reliance on technology and mass production over there. And I mean, that may be the reason why some things are a little bit more expensive, but I thought I should include that as part of my uh, uh, as part of my uh, uh, impressions of the US in terms of the food as I said I've gotten used to the food and I know where to buy food now so it's not the struggle that I had the first really few years when I first came here because I, you, thought, you think you know like in an advanced country you know like this is how things are and everyone this is what everyone is doing and then at that time like it was so cheap I mean the food was so cheap in the United States like a can of beans like was 52 cents a um, uh, what do you call uh, like uh, pretty much bacon was like so cheap which in North Carolina I found out is because they have a lot of uh, pig farms here and so that's the reason why it's cheap but that's part also South African bacon again totally different much more lean not like Canadian bacon but uh, lean like you still get a lot of meat with your strip of fat uh, or you can buy shoulder bacon which is even better um, and uh, it tastes really good because everything is smoked over there uh, it tastes uh, really good so those are things I miss when I go to South Africa I pick out like I eat but I don't even gain any weight in fact I lose weight but I'm eating food probably more than I eat here here I, there's nothing I can touch without gaining weight. That's just, you know, like the start of my life. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just cutting the, um, the soup. By the way, this, um, this, uh, peppers here, they're like really sweet peppers. They make anything taste good whether I eat them raw or cook them, but I'm going to cook them this time and also they're kind of spoiling, so I have to use them. Okay, so I don't have a lot of onion. I only have this and I'm not going to the store. I'm just basically trying to cook what I have in the house. And these are Cotabella mushrooms. You can use wild mushrooms, which are always better. But I, the next best thing is the Cotabella mushroom. Or you could use, you know, like button mushrooms. So any kind you like. I cook with mushrooms. I cook everything with mushrooms. Oh. And. So now we're going to make the onion. It's finer, but hey, I'm a chef. I just whip things up, okay? I'm kidding, I'm not a chef. 
I just love to cook. One of the things I love to do. Um, by the way, I have to go to my garden, so I'll be right back to get some herbs. I planted this year, so I'm eating from the garden. Okay, I am back, and I just got um, like some few herbs from the garden. It's just pineapple sage and some um, parsley. It smells so good. So I'm going to rinse that and chop it up, and it's ready to go. By the way, you don't need a lot of space to plant herbs in your yard. You just need um, some containers and voila, you have an herb garden. Most of my stuff is, has not come up yet. Um, so I'll just, I'll just uh, cut the stems off and add everything here. I don't use a lot of apps, just you know, like for taste. I don't want to overwhelm anything that I cook with a lot of um, a lot of herbs. I could use less spice, but he love using spices. Okay. Now I'm going to spice everything. Uh, you can see here, I, oops, I just have onion, peppers, mushrooms, and some herbs. So I'm going to, I have some dry herbs that I'll, I would like to use, and then I'm going to saute this with olive oil. A little bit of olive oil, then add ground beef. Choose which spices you wanna use. 
ultimately, I'm trying to make a save out of this ship. Uh, I don't want to overdo it. So, let's put our, our beef here. This is about one pound of beef that I did frosted earlier. <laughs> Five seconds more. something similar uh, on Sunday but with chicken and that was so good that I said I'm gonna make it again but with beef so we'll see how this one turns out so now I'm going to let it brown for maybe just a few seconds before I put um, Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if it's Dutch, but yeah, they call it Worcestershire sauce here. By the way, I'm trying to replace most of my um, most of my spices to buy organic spices. I mean. I don't know if there's any benefit uh, or there's that much benefit, but I'm trying to substitute a lot of my food with organic alternatives uh, because, um, you know, everybody's trying to be healthy, as I said, so. This can this is easily like a week a weekday uh a weekday dinner. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh a little bit of the soy sauce alternative. Again, I don't know how it's going to taste, so, but Worcestershire sauce, like you can put as much as you like, because I love the taste. So I'm not afraid to go big on that. But with the soy sauce, I don't know, like you have to be very careful. South African ones are not as this dry and this will add salt too by the way so again and I'm going to crush this thing here Let me lower the heat to medium while I'm doing this because I don't want it to be dry. 
So I'm trying to uh, make sure that it cooks thoroughly um, because we feel we're supposed to make sure that you know it cooks thoroughly. So I want it to cook thoroughly for about 15 minutes and voila. So the whole process probably takes about 30 minutes uh, if you prepare the stuff. Actually, it probably takes 20 minutes if you prepare the stuff beforehand. So. And one of the things that I hardly ever do when I cook is taste my food. I taste it with everyone else. I know that's a bad habit, but it's something. You know what? I forgot one more thing. There's this spice here. Like I call this, I mean, it is called all spice. And I am going to put a little bit like, I'm going to put like a teaspoon. Okay, so that's it. I'm not putting any more stuff. It is done. It should be done in about 10 more minutes. So I'll lower this to between low and high uh, and medium because I want it to cook without burning. So I'm going to cover the pot. Cover the pot. Voila. So I'm going to try and clean up while it's cooking. This is not the habit, okay? I usually don't. Because I cook, somebody else has to clean. That's how it works. But for the camera, I'll be perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. This uh, looks like it's um, done, almost done. I'll give it another five more minutes just so it can come all together and also to get rid of some of the, um, to get rid of some of the uh, water from it. The dish that I just prepared, which is ground beef and vegetables basically, uh, in South Africa, you normally eat that with rice. You just make a big pot of rice. By the way, you could, if you wanted to, I know Americans uh, love uh, spaghetti sauce. Uh, you could just add spaghetti sauce there if you want uh, to make it more palatable if you want. Um, but um, uh, but uh, in South Africa, we would eat it like that. Uh, and uh, take just a bowl of rice and then put you know like a scoop uh, on there and and that's how you would eat it so i'm going to ha uh, have it with romaine um huts. Uh, so i'm sort of gonna make like a taco and um and that's how i'm going to eat mine but i hope you enjoy it try it i know i didn't measure but just use sense okay just uh, if you don't know like how to measure use a teaspoon pretty much for everything except for cayenne pepper just you know like just a teeny bit because it's that hot and I know I know Americans cannot stand hot stuff I shouldn't I, I know I'm generalizing but that's just um, you know, what my experience when people say things are spicy here I'm like what even if you go to an Indian restaurant nothing unbearable in South Africa when you go to an Indian restaurant it feels like your ears are burning so in South Africa we do a lot of one pot meals and I do that here as well because you know the thing is, is that when I was living in South Africa we didn't do a whole lot of 
eating out because it was a lot more expensive to eat out. So every day you had to cook. Eating out was for the end of the month when <laughs> your parents get paid. Uh, but um, of course that changed a lot uh, since we, uh, you know, like a uh, income rise. People are eating out a lot more, but I found out that that is a dangerous thing to do. I do eat out a lot uh, because uh, because I work hard and sometimes it's very hard to, you know, like after work to cook something cheap. But I mean, I can if I was, you know, like serious about it. But um, but. Eating out is a very much an American thing. When I first moved here, I was just shocked at how much people ate out. And uh, that seems to be changing a bit as people are becoming, you know, um, conscious about eating habits. Uh, so what I try to do, if I do go out, I'm, I'm gonna still go to a restaurant where I can eat whole foods. Uh, like for instance, I love eating at Whole Foods, the store, and I can also eat at restaurants, but not fast food. And if I uh, do fast food, it's like once in a while, and even then, it'll be like something like a Panera uh, or a Chipotle, which uh, has like, uh, I would say like good choices. I mean, not really, there are no good choices, and I'm aware when I eat there, that there are no good choices. Chipotle is better uh, in terms of their food. I like their food. I think when I feel like when I'm eating their food, I'm eating real food. Same as Panera. Okay, now I'm going to get the plates and get the dinner ready. One, two, three, four. Someone is home. before so this is what a romaine lettuce heart looks like so just remove the, the back and put it in plates and I'm going to have each person make their own taco So these act like little boats. You just okay. So here's the thing. It's got a little bit oil, like a little bit of oil, olive oil, but I'm not afraid of oil. So basically, don't know if you can see it. I just dish it like that. I think two per person is gonna be enough. So this person did not get the best boats. By the way, everybody eats the same thing in our house now. If you want, like, if you want starch, you can definitely have starch with your um, with your boat. Not supposed to be like that. As I said, you can have this with rice. And you can chop up your lettuce if you want to. Okay. show you the best plate I think this one I don't know this one yes this is the best plate so 
if you can see it, it let me taste it in front of you actually let me not have this plate because i know i have kids here that are spoiled so i usually get give myself the crazy stuff so you just eat it like this mm, oh my god it's so good it's really good peace out let me enjoy my dinner I hope you enjoy yours so but anyway so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video this by the way was requested by someone said can you cook something that you typically cook in South Africa this is how South African cook by the way um, we do have traditional which I will cook uh, some other time but we do have traditional uh, dishes uh, that are authentically South African but at the same time we are so westernized and we have we are also a melting pot of cultures so we have a lot of um, a lot of uh, um, uh, different influences uh, in our cuisine so I hope you get to enjoy this i will make i promise i will make authentically south african food and you will enjoy it and it will be so cheap for your family but it will be so good and healthy by the way so stay tuned for that thank you